Good afternoon. I'm Dave Ortega from Somerville Media Center, and I am pleased to be hosting this week's City Council update. Uh, and uh, I'm doubly, triply pleased to be joined with uh, Matt McLaughlin, who is the Ward 1 City Councilor and City Council President. Hello to you, Matt. Hey, how's it going, Dave? Doing okay, hanging in there. And uh, the Ward 7 City Councilor, Katiana Ballantine. Hello to you, Katiana. Hello, nice to be here. Thank you both for, for, for joining me. And uh, I'm taking over this show from Joe Lynch. And uh, he, he would really uh, get me if I didn't start off the same way that he did asking how you both are doing personally. Um, so Matt, how, how are you doing? I'm doing very well. I'm, uh, you know, managing this pretty well, working out a lot and um, just doing a lot of work from home. So uh, trying to keep positive. And uh, Katjana, how are you? You know, I'm doing one day at a time. Uh, I uh, have learned a few things about myself. Uh, uh, I'm a mom of two daughters. So one of my daughters is in middle school and I realized I'm not necessarily the best homeschooling uh, parent. And uh, uh, so uh, I, I like to encourage uh, more untraditional uh, things in order to keep her time going. And uh, on a personal level, the last couple of uh, 10 days or so has been uh, sad. Uh, my mother-in-law passed away. A childhood friend died Sunday, two days ago of COVID-19. So, um, you know, it's, it's uh, caused, you know, a lot of time for, for reflection. Mm, I'm so sorry to hear that. Um, and Matt, why don't we go ahead and start off with uh, the, the regular update that you've been giving uh, each time you join us. Uh, I'll go ahead and, and let you start this off. Yeah, so I'd like to give my weekly update. Uh, most of this comes from uh, either the city of Somerville's website, which you can find at somervillema.gov, or um, the public health and safety meetings that we hold every Monday. So I'm glad to come here on Tuesday and update people about what we learn on Monday. Uh, so the most important item uh, that I wanted to discuss is that uh, wearing a mask outside is now going to be a requirement, uh, uh, punishable by a fine of $300 uh, if you're a repeat offender or if you're outside not wearing a mask. Uh, so that, this was a decision, it was an executive order from the mayor. Uh, and basically, you know, starting tomorrow, being the 29th of April, uh, there's gonna be a one, we're gonna start this program, we're be able to do this regulation uh, saying that you have to wear a mask outside. Uh, there's gonna be a one week grace period so people can get accustomed to this. So we're not gonna be finding people right away. And I don't think the city, and I definitely don't want to find people. This isn't about generating revenue or punishing people. It's about looking out for people and making sure they're doing the right thing. And the reason this is really important is I wear a mask. Council Valentine wears a mask. A lot of people are wearing a mask. But my mask is useless if someone carrying COVID-19 is not wearing a mask as well. And they've shown studies that show, you know, if I wear a mask, and someone not wearing, someone with COVID-19 doesn't wear a mask, I am, the percentage of me getting infected is much higher. But if the person wearing a mask, ha, if the person who has COVID-19 is wearing a mask and I'm wearing a mask, it greatly reduces the chance of uh, contracting that disease. So we really think it's important that everybody wears a mask. This isn't about punishment. This is about looking out for people in the community. And I highly encourage everybody to wear a face mask uh, if they can. Um, and I should add too that there's a little bit of concern that this does not apply to children under the age of two. And we discussed that in committee last night about uh, what the appropriate age level is and what exemptions there might be. As of right now, anyone over the age of two has to wear a mask. Um, we've also announced that uh, some of the hospital through the Cambridge Health Alliance is going to provide universal COVID-19 testing regardless of if you have uh, symptoms or not. So that's gonna be available to every Somerville resident uh, at the Somerville Hospital and future at the East Somerville School. Uh, right now, you have to call in advance and for right now it's drive up only. They're working to make it uh, accessible to walkers and bikers, but right now they need to set it up to make sure that uh, the area that people are respecting social distancing. And I should also add too, 
even with all of this, we're still asking people to respect social distancing. So even if two people are wearing a mask, uh, keep six feet apart as well. Um, so that's going to cut. That's starting very soon, and within a week, they're hoping to do walk up and drive through. Uh, and this is really uh, testing, and this is really important because this is probably the biggest issue we have in this country right now is there's not enough people getting tested. And now this test is going to be available to any Somerville resident who calls in advance for an appointment. Uh, the Mount Pleasant uh, Senior Home, which is in my ward, um, was placed under quarantine last week. And it's still placed under quarantine. They tested every resident in that building. And they're still awaiting results. Unfortunately, there's some state, uh, state issues holding things up. But uh, everyone at the Mount Pleasant Apartments, we're thinking about you and the city is looking out for them, trying to prevent the spread of this disease and take care of the uh, seniors living there. And then finally, I'll just add that the Somerville Cares Fund is now underway. Uh, the Somerville Cares Fund is going to uh, take care of people during this crisis. We've already generated a lot of money there. And if people are willing to make a donation, uh, go to the Somerville website, somervillema.gov, and there's a link for coronavirus and click on that link and you can learn more about how to donate as well as all the information that we're trying to provide to the community. Uh, so that's all I have, but if you have questions and I know Councilor Ballantyne has some thoughts, uh, please take it away. Yeah, uh, Councilor Ballantyne, um, would you like to, to chime in with uh, any of the updates that, that Matt had talked about, um, expand on any, any of the, uh, the CHA testing or uh, the, the mask, uh, I don't know if you're calling it a mandate, uh, but the, the mask requirement, um, uh, do you have anything to add regarding that or anything else? Um, well, what, I, what I'd like to say, if, because I have this opportunity, is to anybody who needs help, please contact me. Uh, if you need to talk to someone, you know, please contact me. Uh, if you feel that uh, you need food, contact me. Some connection to finan financial resources, mental health, please contact me. And most importantly, I want you to be safe both um, physically and emotionally. Um, during this time, um, there's a lot of research uh, that um, says uh, uh, domestic violence, um, uh, victims of domestic violence could be under more threat. Data from the Somerville um, Police Department and talks that I've had with Chief of Police David Fall Fallon had confirmed in the last couple of years that the domestic violence numbers were on a rise and that this year they are also uh, on a rise. So the um, fact that uh, during this pandemic, people are combined into, into quarters uh, or homes uh, and not able to, to get out is, uh, is certainly concerning to me. So uh, I would just like to do a public announcement that you know, certainly contact me. If you're unsure, type in the, in the subject line bread and uh, I will know what to do. If you're asking for help, just type in an email at katiana at katiana.org. Um, you can call me at 857-928-6852. Um, and there are other hotlines in the city of Somerville. There's uh, Respond which uh, is the domestic violence hotline and they have a 24 seven uh, telephone number, which is 617-623-5900. Um, in terms of uh, what uh, President McLaughlin had said in, uh, in the masks, uh, I will say that the number one feedback that I've gotten from constituents is concerned that people are not keeping their social distance and that uh, they don't have masks on. So if you're walking down, what is it? Somerville's the most densely populated city in New England. It is the third in the country. Uh, we're in close quarters. There aren't um, you know, sidewalks wide enough for uh, people to keep six weeks, uh, six feet apart. So joggers, cyclists that are going by uh, are concerned to everyone. So, um, you know, a mask is a way uh, to help that. And I will say that uh, the executive order is certainly um, a bold move on the city, but I think that we also have, uh, or in our Commonwealth, but I think we have to remember that Somerville is unique because of our density and our 
the proximity that uh, we are to the to the people uh, around us. And uh, I think uh, thank you uh, to President McLaughlin uh, talking about Somerville Cares Fund. And um, yeah, that's about it for right now. Thank you. Uh, and yeah, we just want to remind we want to remind our, our viewers and everybody watching this that the uh, that it does, the order does go into effect starting tomorrow and that there's a week grace period. Uh, but, you know, just make sure that if you are out in public uh, to put on a mask. Um, to loop back to what uh, the news that Matt had about uh, the CHA uh, testing site at the Somerville Hospital uh, expanding um, it's, it's testing to all residents and not just the people who were part of that network as, as was the case when they set up that site initially. Um, how does this change or inform the city's coronavirus response, uh, Matt? Well, I would say that this is the most important thing that they could be doing outside of social distancing and sheltering in place. Uh, and it's something that should have been done a long time ago for the entire country. Um, if you look at countries that are really getting this under control. They started with testing everybody and uh, quarantining people who are infected. So this is gonna give us a better idea. First of all, we give updates all the time about the number of people infected and the number of deaths we have and the number of people who are recovered. We don't know how many people are infected because only people showing symptoms are being tested. So now we have the opportunity to test everybody regardless of symptoms. And we're going to get a better idea of what's going on in the community. So that's why it's very important for um, everyone who is capable of getting tested to be tested uh, so that we even know how to address this issue. And then this brings in the concept of contact tracing, following up with people uh, who are infected and whoever else they talk to to see if they're infected as well. Uh, this is an important first step that we, you know, Somerville is in front of, but unfortunately the nation is really behind on as a whole. So this should have happened a long time ago, but unfortunately we're stuck at the whims of the federal government and the amount of tests we have to provide and the amount of ventilators, all these issues that, you know, countries that were more forward thinking were able to get on top of. And now we're just, uh, we're, we're trying to do our best. And unfortunately some of us in front on this, but I wish the entire country was on the same page. Mm -hmm. And uh, what, what are your impressions about how the uh, Curtitoni administration is managing the, the crisis? Um, you know, you're working hand in hand with, uh, with, with the mayor and uh, just maybe, you know, we're, we're about week six or seven into this. And, you know, what, what, are, your, what are your thoughts at this point? Well, I'd uh, say the mayor's doing a great job. Um, and I remember, you know, sitting down the last time, except for yesterday, I was at a press conference with him. The last time I saw him was like a month and a half ago uh, when this whole thing got started. And it felt like very confident that we were on top of things. And in, in the, I would say, you know, yesterday we had a press conference releasing all this information. And I saw a news call article covering our press conference that showed that Somerville has significantly less uh, cases than a lot of surrounding cities. And I don't want to you know, say that this is all because of the good work we're doing and, or take advantage or take for granted uh, the issue because, you know, there's different factors that go into how people get infected or where people are getting infected. But we have significantly less uh, infection rate than surrounding cities. And I do think it's because we responded proactively from the very beginning. Uh, so that's what was really important. Again, uh, it, we, there's very difficult decisions to be made from the mayor, the governor and the president. Uh, and sometimes it's hard to take that decision. And it is something like a, a mask requirement. It's like, that's a difficult decision to make and they don't take it lightly, but I'm glad that we're being very proactive as a city. Yeah, and uh, Katiana, do you have any, uh, any, anything to add? Um, I, I will agree to what my colleague said. I think that um, uh, I've respected and appreciated the amount of, of work and hours that uh, the administration has put in on this. Uh, I think it's really important to be proactive. I think that uh, some of the uh, approach 
Um, I know we've heard uh, the mayor say in the past, you know, we need a regional approach when we talk about the, the housing crisis, but this, this concept and this thinking that you need to think about this regionally and what's uh, beyond your borders. So I, I think that um, that gives one the opportunity to think more globally and then be able to, to drill down on what it works for our community. And again, I'd like to highlight the fact that our community is, is unique because of its density. And um, more so than any other community in the city of, uh, in the state of Massachusetts. So um, uh, anything that we can do, uh, and certainly that the administration has taken on to, to limit that contact and uh, provide the face masks, the social distancing. Uh, I've been, you know, very, uh, you know, pleased. And I will say that my constituents have, you know, um, hands down, um, people have been overwhelmingly supportive. Um, I probably got, uh, I think it was five emails today that just said, thank you. Thank you that uh, you all are supporting the administration and the administration is taking um, uh, our safety seriously. Um, can you, uh, uh, Matt, can you speak to why the, the council has asked for information on what the city is doing to support communities of color and homeless individuals at this time? Well, I, I, it's obviously very important because we have a number of vulnerable populations living in the city and people of color and immigrants in particular are uh, more susceptible, uh, not genetically, but because a lot of people have to still go to work. Uh, there's a lot of essential workers out there. Uh, there's people who generally sometimes don't get the information that we put out in our email blasts or on television and whatnot. So there's populations that, you know, we're, we, we still struggle to get this information out to, but we're trying really hard to do that. I went down to Foss Park the other day and I saw, you know, there's a sign saying uh, to keep your social distancing. And it was in like four different languages. They had a sign for each language. Uh, and I should also plug the Welcome Project that's doing a lot of great work right now, looking up uh, undocumented immigrants in the city. Uh, they're starting a fund as well. And I'll have more updates for that next week when they're up and, go, up and started. But it is really important, you know, we have numerous senior homes in the city. Uh, we have immigrants from all walks of life, people of color from all walks of life in the city. We have veterans, uh, all groups of people that, you know, because of, you know, I would say this whole experience has shown how the importance of class uh, and how class and race and all these things intertwine. And some people, uh, are feeling it worse than others. I saw a stat that said that 40% uh, of all cases in Massachusetts, COVID-19 cases, are Latino. And it's not because you're genetically predisposed to it, it's because of all these different social factors. So we've always taken those issues seriously in some of them, and now we have to take it even more seriously. Hmm. And um, Katjana, uh, do, do you have anything to add uh, uh, as we, you know, can, either stuff that you're looking ahead to, um, stuff that the council is looking ahead to, um, anything that concerns you, anything that you want to highlight? Um, well, I think that um, to, to highlight what um, uh, President McLaughlin said, um, the immigrant communities, I think as time goes on, um, everybody is concerned that nobody falls through the cracks in any way. So we think we drill down in, in more detail. Um, I think the, as we're moving into the warmer months, uh, there has been um, a uh, tremendous um, a request by residents to uh, uh, use the roads in multi-purpose ways, expand the sidewalks, um, possibly close down streets. They are uh, pedestrian only streets. So as people who have been uh, cooped up in their houses uh, for the last uh, um, you know, seven weeks, have the opportunity to possibly enjoy uh, the, the sunny weather, I should say, uh, they will want to enjoy the sunny weather. So I think as a, as a city, we also have to be proactive that 
uh, people are going to go outside. So you need to give them, you know, a little bit more breathing room. So the, the, there has been a lot of requests by constituents to the administration to, to think about having dedicated pedestrian zones uh, on, on streets. So, so the, the, the administration said that they would circle back with us on that, that they are looking to see what other communities like Oakland and Denver are doing around the country and uh, see if whether we can apply any of those uh, practices um, to our community. So I am thinking about that into the into the future. I'm also um, uh, being the mom of a school age child. Uh, I am interested in you know how that's all gonna gonna work out, and I'm looking forward to hearing from the the administration what uh, the options. How are they going to handle the the rest of the year? Um, uh, how are kids going to move um, from one grade to, to the next, sort of sort of the, the logistics of that. Are they anticipating um, what um, schooling is going to look like in the fall? Um, have we uh, share back what the, the remote learning uh, has, uh, has done uh, uh, for the way we teach uh, school? Are there things that um, uh, we could do that um, do more re remote learning or um, uh, adapt curriculum as we go, go forward? Because I, I will say, you know, being a parent of a child and certainly uh, talking to my other fellow parents, they're uh, we're all sort of, um, not sure where we're going. And as I don't think we've gotten a lot of leadership from the Department of Education at the, at the state level. Um, so I, uh, those are the kinds of things certainly as, as a parent I'm looking um, for. I'm also um, the caregiver for my nearly 90 year old dad who lives with us. So um, uh, that has, um, has been, uh, an interesting and I should say rather stressful time to make sure that we social distance in our house, you know, that everything is clean and, and, and so forth to make sure he's as healthy as possible. Uh, I will have to give a shout out to the Council on Aging for uh, sending uh, uh, videos uh, for um, seniors to be able to do exercises on their own and, and uh, checking in uh, nearly every day. But I also do know that there are a large uh, group of uh, seniors who are not necessarily connected with um, city uh, services, not for a lack of trying. The administration certainly has done that. And I think the Council on Aging is absolutely uh, fantastic. Uh, I just, you know, would like to eventually hear back on sort of the uh, next steps of how we could um, maybe do better or reach out more or where they need help. I shouldn't necessarily say they could do better. They're trying to do everything they can, but where else can we be of, of help uh, to the seniors who, who live in our, our city? Because they're nearly uh, 11,000 of them. And um, most of those, I think it's uh, nearly 80% of those live in houses. They don't necessarily live in um, house complexes. Hmm. And Matt, do you have any, do you have any final thoughts? Any, anything you want to take the opportunity to highlight or, you know, uh, address some concerns? Anything along those lines? No, the, the only thing I would say is, you know, it, we're asking for cooperation from everyone in the community uh, for the sake of yourselves and other people around you. I think uh, one of the biggest issues through this whole crisis has been people who don't display symptoms or people who feel like they're invincible um, and don't realize that maybe you are invincible in this case, but the person next to you is not invincible. And I think that this whole experience has kind of shown how interconnected we all are. Uh, on a literal level at this point, that what you do affects how I live and how other people live as well. So I know there's a lot of fear and trepidation out there. 
there's a lot of concerns. There's a lot of directions we could take this. Um, and a lot of people have different ideas and a lot of people um, reject some of the ideas that have been pushed by the city. And I think it is important, you know, to just follow these guidelines for your sake, for the sake of other people. They, you know, in a few months when we get through all this, hopefully, um, we can look back and say that we grew as a community rather than uh, divided. That, that's, I think that's the perfect way to, to end the segment. Um, I, I want to thank you both for coming on to this uh, city council update. And uh, I'm, I apologize for not being Joe Lynch. Um, <laughs> uh, thank you. No one else can be. <laughs> What's nobody can be. Yeah. <laughs> um, Councillor Matt McLaughlin, who uh, is Council for Ward One and the City Council President, thank you for being with me. Thanks, Dave. And Ka Councillor Katiana Ballantine, uh, Councillor uh, City Councilor representing Ward Seven in Somerville, thank you for joining me, Katiana. Thank you, Dave. And uh, stay safe, have a good week, and uh, we will see you next week. <laughs>